Hey guys, welcome to The Drop. I'm Neha and with me I've got Mehak Rizvi who is the editor of The Good Times magazine. Thank you for joining us, Mehak. Thank you for having me. Uh, so you started writing for Good Times at a pretty early age, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I have to ask, why journalism? So uh, Neha, I think I decided to study journalism after my A-level simply because I enjoyed writing. So I thought that becoming a journalist would give me the opportunity to write more. Right. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. How I started to work for a magazine is um, it's a very simple story. So I, it was my first week of college and I happened to meet the publisher of a magazine who offered me an internship. I took the internship and after a month I naturally thought it was over but then they called me back and they said that there was an opening and they wanted me to join them as the assistant editor. So I said yes and then I've never looked back. Well, that's wonderful. Um, and you, you've launched your own e-magazine as well. So tell me about that. Okay, so I wouldn't say that uh, Technically Mode is mine. Yes, it was my brainchild and it was my idea, but I actually went to uh, an e-store with the idea and I launched it for them. Right. Uh, we've uh, gotten a lot of support from the fashion fraternity and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I just think that um, it was a very good learning experience for me because I did have a lot of experience with editorial work, but this was the first time where I actually uh, got to uh, experience the business aspect of a publication. It was literally like building a business from scratch. And have you collaborated with fashions and brands for it as well? For that and like for everything that I do, obviously you have to close uh, work really closely with everyone that works in fashion and that includes different brands. So yes, there have been quite a bunch. And uh, the Is thing there is any favorite fashion brand that you loved collaborating with? See, the thing is that I've uh, worked for two monthlies and I've been associated with a fortnightly twice now. So over the years, it, if we start counting, that means hundreds of issues yeah. that I've edited. And if we start counting how many I've collaborated with, there's also like, so I, uh, my association with brands goes two ways, in the capacity of an editor and also when they approach me as an influencer. Right. So if you combine both and then like, it's, it's hard to keep count now. Right. Um, but you also branched out to TV. You worked with PJ Meer for a bit. Uh, what was that experience like? And do you, is that something that you'd like to do in the future? TV. Okay, so the way that I landed on PJ's show is also kind of a funny story. Uh, basically, I was still in college and um, this was also when I had a full-time job with a magazine. Uh, as I mentioned, I was studying journalism and one of the courses was production. Right. So I think it was that course that got me really curious to find out how things actually work on a set. Now I was familiar with uh, a television set or camera angles because I was invited to multiple shows as a guest. Right. And even on those shows, you know, I always wonder that these producers who look very important running from here and then I always wondered what their job actually was and why they were so important. So I, it was merely out of curiosity, you know, PJ was my dad dad's friend. So I asked him if I could just come to observe and it was just that. It yeah. wasn't even an internship. I never even actually uh, went on set because I was too fascinated by the PCR and the MCR. Right. So I would just sit there and look at the cameras and all those gadgets. It was literally just that. But one day while leaving work, um, PJ just got up and he said that uh, I'm going to see you tomorrow at 9am. You're going live. You're doing the segment in English. And obviously my first, my, my first reaction was no, I, I can't do this, but um, you, you can't really argue much with PJ yeah. Me. So yeah, the next morning I was like... And what was that like? Because it's very, I, being on TV is very different than, you know, print journalism is, and writing it is, and stuff. It is. So, so um, I'll tell you what, it was challenging. Perhaps the most challenging aspect though was the fact that I had to be live at 9 a.m. I am not a morning person <laughs> and being live at 9am means that you need to be at work by 8 because there's hair and makeup yeah. and then there's some sort of preparation also. So that was a challenge and then another challenge was like as I mentioned this segment was in English. So I would come every morning say a few things in English and then I was gone. But one day since this was a live show we had a live call and someone, I can speak a bit of Urdu on this show right? Someone just called and said uh, Okay, so someone just called and said that we don't really get what she said. Can she please speak in Urdu? 
and then PJ said, you're absolutely right. Kids these days, they don't know their own language. And I pride myself on my Urdu skills. But you know, it's sometimes it's just a little hard to say certain things in Urdu. Yeah. So yeah, it was that one man who decided to make life really hard for me. So that was hard, but I guess uh, I... Well, it was an experience. Someone. It was, it was. Right. Um, actually, speaking of experiences, you've, you've been mostly in the fashion um, and lifestyle yeah. side of the journalism. But do you think like with this sort of uh, line that our media takes these days, are we like take, depending too much on sensationalism and going away from the integrity of what journalism Absolutely. is supposed to be? Absolutely. I, I do agree with that. And that's something that I try to stay away from or whatever publication I'm associated with or whatever uh, content I'm creating. I try to stay away from it. Uh, but yeah, I do agree that uh, even in like, you know, this I, I feel like earlier this was just restricted to politics, but now it has seeped into uh, entertainment, fashion and lifestyle also. But lastly, what advice would you give to any aspiring journalists out there? I would just give one advice and obviously I'm uh, speaking as a lifestyle journalist and that would be that uh, do not get into this if you're not ready to pay your dues because it does take a while. I started working in 2010, we're in the later half of 2019 now and I still don't think that I'm there. Uh, a lot of girls try to uh, get into, uh, you know, they want to start working with a publication or blogs thinking that it's a very glamorous job or you get to meet interesting people. You do get to meet interesting people but it's really not a glamorous job. There are, you need to put in a lot of late hours and uh, uh, yeah, you, you need to be dedicated. So if you're not ready for that and if you just think it's easy money or an easy job, it's really not. Right, great. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Uh, that's all for today. We'll be back with a new episode. You were watching The Drop. We're really excited to share fantastic content with you on all the fun topics. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below.